Hey, what's up? It's a figure hunter and up for review today is the Tick Watch Pro 3 Ultra. We're going to look at the ins and outs of this watch in every possible way. We're going to look at it from the valuation standpoint of a CrossFit tracking device because everything on the Fit Gear Hunter channel and the FitGearHunter.com website associated with it is for the purpose of testing and tracking devices for CrossFit training. We're obviously going to evaluate this in all of the sleep and wellness and all the general use and all just the basic features. And also, we're going to look at it side by side with the Tick Watch Pro 3 original so you can see some of the minor differences and I'm going to talk about some some of the bigger differences. So we're not gonna get into every single benefit and feature, but we are gonna look at somewhat of a comprehensive because it is a new release and it was a very competitive Wear OS device. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I've got a lot of whoop testing on the way, Power Labs armbands and heart rate sensors, as well as the Aura Ring on its way. So I'm gonna say something at the outset. I'm going to be a little bit strong in some of the things I say because it is, you know, November 2021 and I have tested a lot of watches and the Tick Watch Pro 3 original, I really liked when it came to a Wear OS offering and Wear OS has continued to evolve their offering. So there's some things to consider there, but I want to just be honest that I'm going to give some strong opinions. These are my personal feelings and experiences. So, you know, I'm going to give it a little bit more than normal, a little bit stronger uh, critique but I have tested a lot of watches, so I feel like it's important to save this information and get it out there because it's not an inexpensive watch at $300. So we're going to look at four basic things. We're going to look at general use of the watch, general use of the Wear OS, just basic overview stuff, just of how Wear OS is operating in this day and time, November 2021. We're going to look at it compared alongside, you know, alongside the original Tick Watch Pro 3 GPS. Um, we're going to compare, and then we're going to talk about the, the pros and cons. So with each of these subjects, we're going to look at just the general watch and the app overview of these information pieces. And then we're going to talk about the pros and cons in real life and in CrossFit tracking. Then at the end, we're going to talk about the real deal pros and cons, like not a summary of all the pros and cons in each subsection, but just what I feel like is the real, you know, what the real positives and the real negatives are. So the first one is going to be a watch overview and app overview. Second, we're going to look at workouts and training specific specifics, the watch and the app, and talk about pros and cons. Then we're going to look at sleep and wellness aspects on the watch and on the app, pros and cons. And then we're going to get into the real deal. So with that, let's dive in. We're going to look at these side by side. And if you want to see the full accuracy of the heart rate, it's going to be in the description below, the review for the heart rate accuracy on the device itself. So let's dive into the general use aspects. And there it is, TickWatch Pro 3 versus the other TickWatch Pro 3 Ultra versus the original TickWatch Pro 3. So let's get those similarities out of the way. So if you look at the two, they look a lot like each other. Um, there is a little bit of like an etching around the side here, but very, very similar. Both watches, and we'll just say the TickWatch Pro 3 Ultra does have a microphone and a speaker, so you can take calls on it. You can hear answers um, from the uh, Google Assistant, but everything about them is similar. The bands are different. So the original band had this sort of look. It looked like leather, although it was rubber. And then the new band is some other kind of material. It's got some scientific name to it. I'm sorry, I don't remember what it is, but it feels really different. Both of them feel very rigid. So I have not used either band on either watch in all of the testing because I just feel like there's no stretch to it. They're super thick, but they do have a real professional look to them. So two buttons on the side, the buttons are just push button presses and what looks like the same heart rate sensor, but the accuracy is a felt different difference. So it's much better on the new TickWatch Pro 3 Ultra. Same charging connectors, same 23, 22 millimeter lugs. So those are the similarity and differences with the TickWatch. So now let's put that aside. Let's look at this and just the basic overview. So Wear OS 101, so you swipe down, you get quick settings. You swipe from the bottom, you get your uh, notifications. The notifications actually look really great. There's a reconnect to the internet. Boy, oh boy, do I have a lot of feelings about that. This comes up all the time and it's like, okay, you gotta open the app on your phone, then you gotta push this button, then you gotta say okay. Um, but it does give you like the text font size and the clarity of the screen are definitely the best that I've tested. So that's notifications, swipe to the right and you get all these things. What's the weather in Omiyak in Russian? Nope. In Russian, you would say, Danyak. So the, what, the speaker works good. 
What's the weather in Omiyakin, Russia? Right now in Oneonta, New York, it's 35 degrees and cloudy. Well, Tonight, the forecast is around either way. Um, it doesn't get it right every time. You get just a base, you know, basic summary, a little quote for the day. It's the Google Wear OS thing. Um, and then these are the widgets. So you can see just basic pieces of information. I love the news widget because you get little pictures. It all works, you know, that works really well. Big pretty screen there. This is, you know, the Runtastic app that I use to track stats, heart rate, and calculator. So I, you know, you, you don't get full list of widgets that you can program in here, but the ones you can get are um, decent. So here you get into this top button goes into the basics of all the apps. You have the tick suite of apps, which is health, which is that summary of your day, exercise, pulse. We're not going to look at every single one in detail. There's a million reviews that'll look at every single one of these in detail. Um, the thing I just really wanted to point out is because it's Wear OS, you can download different features. So there's the Google Fit set of things if you want to actually track your data in the Google Fit app. Um, but the Maps feature is really awesome. So like, here's where we are, and you can like zoom around. It's just like the Google Map is is really cool. So we'll not take too much time with that. And then the there's the Runtastic that I've been using to track the device. The Spotify is fantastic um, because you can just tell it to track on different places. It'll look for devices. I could turn this on the TV without like setting anything up. I just sort of said, yeah, go play this on the TV. So um, it worked really well and you can download Strava. You can download different features like UV, but you know, these are the main apps that you get to use and that's the basic functionality of the watch itself, um, you know, just in its full features. Okay, let's look at the series of apps that go into the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra GPS. This is the Wear OS app. This is where you have to have the baseline connection. And there are some basic settings that you can just work with here as far as like what notifications, what your order of tiles, which is that widget information we saw in the watch and the watch faces. And then if you're connected, then you go into the Mobvoi app and you can see you know, the basics of information. So you have your mental and energy levels, mental fatigue and energy levels, your activity, your exercise, sleep and then the basic health information down at the bottom. You see your device is connected here, and that settings doesn't give you anything but just feedback. So there's really not a lot of settings or tweaking. So it is just really a very simple platform. It doesn't have a lot of expansiveness to it. And then the Wear OS is really just for the watch itself. You go into the settings, there's not a whole lot of features here either. You know, go into any of these, it doesn't give you any editable settings when it comes to some of the health features and the workout features we'll talk about in a second. And then obviously, you know, you can go into Google Fit, you can link to different parts of the Google Fit, you know, app, and you can track your information there if you like the way that looks and if the Google Fit flows into other things for you. So that's just a simple high level overview of the app because we're gonna look at more details in a second. So second. what are the general use aspects that I liked? Obviously that it is light, it has relatively sleek design, it's really good looking, it's got Wear OS, which means it's got a big, beautiful, vibrant AMOLED screen. I really like the overall screen usage. It's just such a better experience than Transflective from what I'm used to. The Wear OS you know, operating system is growing. This has the Snapdragon 4100 processor, so it's gonna be able to get Wear OS 3.0 when it comes out next year. It'll probably be late in 2022. But it's also got that second screen, which I really like, and really, when your battery dies, you're still gonna have a watch. That is really cool. It's something that no other people, you know, no other watches are doing. The Wear OS apps and the expandability are good. I mean, they're they're starting out. They got a basic, you know, platform. And the Spotify, the fact that you can download Spotify, but more importantly, you can download your playlist into the watch. You can use your watch to control the music appearing on the TV or on a you know, iPad nearby, you can basically tell it to start playing wherever. That's pretty cool. And the maps experience, the maps, the fact that you can download Google Maps into this and you can get a picture of, of where exactly you are, it's legit. I mean, it is a nice map experience. But what are the cons? It has all been so buggy. Wear OS and the way that the platform works with functioning with the watch has been so, for me, uh, just a problematic experience with being able to connect it, there's so many times when it's like, you go to look at the Mobvoi app to get your, your stats and it's like, it's not connected. So you gotta go back to the Wear OS app, you gotta go to the watch to say, okay, now reconnect. 
and it, it's just not been an easy experience. It has been problematic and difficult. The battery life, now the battery life is rated at you know multiple days, but the way I test it, and you have to, when you first set it up, you have to turn on all the sensors if you wanna get all the data. So I just turn all the sensors on, and I do like an always-on display, and the original TicWatch Pro 3 lasted about three days with always-on display, even at like medium to medium low brightness settings. But with this, I'm getting two maybe two and a quarter days. If you remember to turn on like theater mode, which turns like when you go to bed, you turn on theater mode and it turns the whole screen off. Then you get that two and a quarter days. And if you don't, you get like 1.75 days. So it's, it, it really takes a shot in the arm. If you don't remember those things, there's no automatic way that I found that I'm aware of to set it so that it just automatically turns off at a certain time of night to conserve power. But the app itself is just too simple. So in, in my opinion, there's there's a lot of great sort of backbone to everything, and the Spotify and the maps are awesome, but the experience is so frustrating that it takes it all away. It makes you forget all the positives because the platform and then even the battery life taking a hit a little bit slower, a little bit lower, it's not as good. So that's the pros and cons for the general use, and obviously you saw it next to the TicWatch Pro 3 original. So we're going to talk about workouts and training. I want to say a couple things before we dive in. One is I've done the accuracy testing for just the optical heart rate sensor and it is much better than the original TicWatch Pro. So the original TicWatch Pro 3 it was getting like 40% accurate when doing a CrossFit workout. This is getting about 75%. If you see the video in the link below, you'll see that I didn't do as extensive testing because I had a little bit of problem extracting data or getting the heart rate zones. I can't you know, set some of those things. So the two main platforms you can use on the watch are Tick Exercise or Fit Workout. Fit Workout is the Google Fit variant that will link to Google Fit on your phone if you want to upload your data there. So we're gonna look at those basic things, but please be aware that you also have the full Wear OS capabilities to download other apps. Maybe we'll touch on that for just a second because that's where I did extrapolate some of the data. But with that, let's look at the workouts and the training aspects on the watch and on the app. Okay, so now looking at workout features. So the Tick Exercise, you know, it has a, you know, a number of different you know, pieces of, inf you know, different profiles you could use. It's not super expansive because usually there's a bunch more you can choose from. I just have been choosing freestyle. When you go into a freestyle workout, you know, you I won't start it because you just get like four pieces of information. You can turn it off. It doesn't give you many editable fields. So we won't bother with that. Um, but you know, you can see basic information and you will get a basic summary of information. Not going to show it because it is just like here's your average heart rate, here's your average, you know, here's your max heart rate, here's the number of calories you burn. So, really simple. Um, if you go into the the Fit Health, the Google Fit version, um, Fit Workout, I should say, it actually looks a little bit better. You get a laundry list of activities you can choose, and you can find CrossFit, which I like. Um, so you go into the CrossFit, you have you know, some settings, um, but it's still super basic layout, super big. You do get a heart rate graph with this one. Um, and that's basically it. You know, Runtastic's got a lot more information to it. So you can track, you know, CrossFit, you can, you know, connect it to a chest strap here. You can, you know, here it's gonna look for my whoop. It'll say, oh, there's the whoop. Cause it just tracks it, looks at it really easily, really quickly and gives some, re all the workout data options are super simple on the watch and there's not a log book that's really easy to access i think it's in one of the tick aspects like in the tick health you can see activities but eh, it's just it's just not really worth like looking at um, plus i've been recording my activities using a, a app that i could download more data so that is the workout on the watch Okay, so looking at the, the app for workouts itself. So no exer exercise there listed because I had switched over to a different exercise tracking app. But if we just want to look at a few of the, you know, the basics that I tracked in the beginning on those first few workouts. Um, so you can see this is the summary of information you get. You get a heart rate graph. You, I'm putting my finger there. You're not, you can't get any information out of it. You can't turn it sideways. You can't look at specifics. And those heart rate zones, you can't control. At least I couldn't find, I looked everywhere, I couldn't find a way to control those zones to match it uh, to what I'm comfortable with. And then you have, you know, the exercise sets. So, you know, really simple and basic information. 
Um, this was a very rigorous workout towards the tail end. I had, it was super brutal and it kept up with the heart rate as you saw or can see in the heart rate accuracy review in uh, the description below. So that is the workouts. The other thing you can see in here is that there's no training information. There's no training data. You get your time so you could see your activity time like over the week and over the month, like how much time you worked out. Just not really relevant for useful, you know, a useful training program. Just tells you your active times, your exercise minutes. Not really helpful. And then, um, you know, a couple of just tidbit things. So this is the Google Fit. So if you look at workouts in it, you know, I don't have any workouts tracked to this, but this is how it would look. You can see your workout here. This is actually was uploaded. Um, from another device because it just sort of synced in and flowed in once I turned it on. So you can see the calories. This was the Chad workout from today. It was really rough and you just see the heart rate zone over time. So you can actually at least check the heart rate in different periods of time. So it is at least somewhat more useful, but you can see there's no heart rate zones. So again, just frustrating because you can't really look at details and then you can go into a downloadable app which is called Runtastic from Adidas. Um, I think it costs a good bit of money per year. So you can see your news feed of workouts. This is where I just have been downloading the different information. So you know that's the more bland information. What you want to do is go into the progress at the bottom. This is not a review for the TickWatch Pro 3 but I'm just showing it to you anyway and you can see your heart rate graph and you can look at different heart rate zones that you were capturing time in so that you can actually track and you can set your own zones here. So you can see the zone ranges in the bottom with each of those percentages and the time spent. So if you're doing zone training, you can track all that. This is not really relevant, um, but that's the Runtastic app. That's all you really have. And really, I mean, that should be just disappeared. And even the Google Fit maybe disappear and just look at what Mobvoid provides and what comes with the watch not a lot of training information. Let's talk. So what do we find this pro and con about workouts and training aspects on this watch? The overall pro is that it has overall good or okay, decent, solid heart rate accuracy when wearing the watch on the wrist and doing a CrossFit workout, which a lot of devices can't say. The sensor is definitely an upgrade over the original TicWatch Pro 3. But it's, you know, I mean, so it's 75%. I didn't take it through the full extents because of the other pros that you can download Wear OS apps. You can download Strava or Runtastic or Sporty Go, and you can connect to Bluetooth chest strap or Bluetooth armband and get full accuracy there. So the expandability of that feature is really nice. The fact that you can expand those things. But what are the cons? The cons are so much more than any of the pros at this point, because from what I have, not been able to find is with Wear OS, I cannot find a true sports training analytics software that gives you training load, that gives you exertion scores, not just heart rate zones, that gives you, you know, a trip score, an epoch, you know, all the basic tenets that you would want to track to evaluate the exertion, like the true difficulty of what you put your body through in a CrossFit workout, which in my opinion is paramount and crucial when really having buying a watch for tracking a CrossFit workout. So if you want this for just a basic all around watch, just for simple walking and running and biking, simple things like that, it's gonna do the job fine with just basic tracking. But if you're wanting this for a CrossFit tracking device, it's not got the guts at all. And Wear OS currently doesn't have the apps that have the guts at all. So there's no training analytics whatsoever. And then even the workout analytics are super bland, even when using some of these third party apps. So, you know, Strava, Strava, you can connect, you can track your workouts to Strava app, but it only tracks running and biking. And so Strava does have training load tracking. So you could do it and just ignore the GPS that you didn't go anywhere, but stayed in your box and did your workouts. So all these things are just incredibly limited at this point when this video came out. And the watch itself just doesn't have much capability with um, expansion outside of just Wear OS. Like what comes in the box on the watch is just overly simple, just very, very bland 
very 2015 as far as the details it provides. So with that, let's look at sleep and wellness. There are new features in the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra. It is now tracking a version of heart rate variability where it's tracking your mental and your energy level. So your, men your mental level, mental strength, mental focus, mental clarity level, and your energy level, just overall wellness on top of the stress and the SpO2 that it was on the original. So you have a couple of other new features there in the sleep and wellness category. So with that, let's dive into the watch, the app, and talk about real life. Okay. Okay, so sleep and wellness on the watch, it's got a lot to it. So you got tick sleep, which will give you the last night's sleep. Um, here, you know, this was not an accurate night, but you do get a lot of big pretty graphs. We're gonna talk about some of the details to it. You get all your stages, which is nice that it has all the stages and you can see your heart rate across time. And, you know, and then you get your blood oxygen. So you can see your blood oxygen comb combined with your sleep overall. So it's got a really visual, useful, um, combination of information. We're gonna to have to talk about the accuracy and some of the downfalls in a second. Um, so there's, you can just, you know, track your pulse ox at any time or you can see your chart over a period of time. Uh, the tick zen is just sort of a calming thing. Uh, that's your stress. So you can see your stress over the course of time. You can see that it tracked the stress when I was asleep and you'll see this in a second on the app, but not as much during the day, which is when you would probably need it. Um, you know, tick hearing, it will keep up. I, 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 this tracks the loudness of a room, but look, I mean, it, it, it's just not right. I mean, it, you know, a lot of these things I'm finding a frustration with because they're not accurate. It's saying this is dangerous, dangerous level. Like I'm at like a Beastie Boys concert, but I mean, good Lord, I'm sitting in an office. Um, not accurate and it's only spot check. It won't give you any information or at least I didn't maybe turn on a metric, but I don't think I missed anything. So that is the basics of what you can see in health and wellness on the app itself, on the watch itself. And now we have sleep and wellness in the app. And you know, you know, it, it, it looks like it, it is tracking, you know, the zones. This was way off. I didn't go to bed at 11 o'clock. So let's look at this. This, you know, it's, it's tracking all the zones. The graph looks, you know, helpful and useful, but the deep sleep, two hours and 39 minutes when all the other devices were saying differently. And then you get your average heart rate and your, your blood oxygen throughout the night. So it gives you useful, you know, it gives you all the stages. It gives you the average. You can see your heart rate graph over the course of the night and even your SpO2 through the course of the night. And then there was a little nap, so it will track naps. So it does pick up some of those things. Then the other wellness things are down here in the bottom. So you can see your stress throughout the day, you know, your average stress, it does give you a score. To me, because it's not tracking the actual day, the work day, it's just tracking at night. It's not really helpful because you're not tracking the time, the period of time in which you would be stressed. And then even in my sleep, the fact that I'm scoring 75% stress level, and then it just, I mean, so you look at that, 49 average. Well, I had a stress level of 75 while I was in bed, makes no sense. And then I had all green stress level, low stress in during the day. And so the average of zeros and 75 averages out to 49, not really helpful because the zeros would be value that would be worthwhile. The SPO two tracking it does track it about once an hour it is good that it's tracking it sort of continually but it's just not truly continually throughout the night and then the other big feature is this new mental fatigue and energy level this is supposed to be heart rate variability tracking even if you were to look at um the information you know mental fatigue it'll give you like the eye will give you some blurb about you know symptoms onset sickness energy level but if you see it it's just tracking you know like I have a great mental fatigue, like I'm in the one which is, you know, refreshed, fully aware. That's not really true. Energy level, number five, I'm just sitting at five most of the day, refreshed. I did the Chad workout today. I don't feel refreshed, I do not. And then if you look at it, I wanted to do a little bit deeper dive into the health and wellness because this is what I saw every morning when I woke up. So mental fatigue, number one, you can look down at the bottom, you can see the energy level, level five, Sleep, six hours and 21 minutes, that seems okay. Only information you can get is the efficiency, which just means time you were actually asleep on estimate and the time you're in bed. But then you look, that was my recovery on WHOOP, 18% recovered. Sleep performance, 530, you know, 78%, but that's just the amount of time I needed to sleep. My Garmin body battery had me at 32% when I woke up. So I was like starting the day super behind. There it is, barely recovered. 
my sleep score for the night on Garmin was a 20. My sleep score on Polar was, you know, gave me a very poor rating. This is a combination of the heart rate variability and, you know, a bunch of different things. But, it, you know, all these better quality systems are saying you are not recovered, even on the auto sleep, which is a Apple app. You know, my readiness score in the red. You know, another app on the Apple app, 11% recovered. Here's another night. Oh gosh, great. I got a more sleep, eight hours and 23 minutes. And it even said my deep sleep was three hours and 58 minutes. That is way off the charts, not accurate. And then, you know, mental fatigue, I'm at like a one the whole day. Energy level at the bottom, or I think I still record it. Energy level, I'm at the top energy level all day. My average stress score, you know, said 58, but didn't capture the day. And then this is what Whoop said when I woke up, 27% after that big long night. Garmin sleep score, 56 out of 100. Failed that test. My body battery, my heart rate variability evaluation, 46, so I'm at less than 50% ready for the day. There it is showing the depletion. Polar is just saying I'm okay, doing all right. And then you could see the sleep score, you know, again, another app, 25% recovered, you know, sleep six hours and six minutes you know you look at this look at the middle top right deep sleep three hours so half of my time of sleep i was in deep sleep not true um same basic information i'm really good mental really good energy you know i got a 77 on that app polar saying i'm doing okay just okay 34 percent on the athletic app with apple 41 was my starting you know body battery resources 12 i got a 12 for my sleep score Failed that test big time. And then uh, Whoop was saying that I was 47% recovered in the day. So, you know, those are the things that I wanted to share because I think that's pertinent to sleep and wellness and it's just not showing good information. So there you have it. You saw for yourself some of the features and benefits. Let's talk about the pros and cons. So the pros are the SpO2 is looks like it's got relative accurate tracking. And there are a lot of watches that have SpO2 where you just can do spot checks. So this is at least doing about one hour a night, check taking a little blink. So you have that. It does, it is nice that it has sleep stages. So you can see light, REM, deep, and awake. So you can see all the sleep stages. It, it, it does add the heart rate variability to tracking mental awareness and overall energy level, and it does track stress. So it tracks a lot of what you would want to track in sleep and wellness. But let's talk about the cons. You know, the cons are is that none of it is that useful at all. All of it doesn't even seem hate to say it, it doesn't even seem to be accurate. If you look at the sleep tracking, you, you know, you saw that it basically is just, you know, on a five hour, five and a half hour night or six hour night of sleep, it gave me like three and a half hours of deep sleep where it's all the other devices. And that's the tragedy of what I'm testing it now versus all these other devices I'm testing at the same time. It's just not accurate for even the sleep stages that is nice that it provides, but they're not accurate, so therefore not worthwhile. It does not provide a sleep score. It just gives you like how much time you actually were asleep within the time you were actually being tracked. That's not helpful. That's not an evaluation of health and wellness from your sleep. The mental and the energy levels, totally useless. I mean, like just not accurate. There'd be times where I had a terrible night's sleep, heart rate variability was down, everything was not good, and it would wake up and say, and then I'm like tip top shape for mental and energy level overall. Same thing with the stress. It looked like it was tracking the stress. It mostly would be able to track it at night, but not really during the day, but it didn't give me any information that I could take action on. It just showed me a graph, but it didn't tell me any pertinent details around it. So. All of those things just, just make me feel like none of these things matter. None of these things are worthwhile. Even if it has SpO2 or sleep stages and heart rate variability, it doesn't correlate to what seems to be any accuracy, but at the very minimum end of the day, it doesn't correlate to anything that's of use. So that is the summary of sleep and wellness. So what is the real deal with the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra? 
in today's November 2021 world. The pros are is it it does have some of those higher you know higher components like SPO2 that not all watches have, Harvey variable tracking at some level that definitely not all watches has. It does have Wear OS and the Wear OS backbone is something that really can be expansive. It obviously provides a lot of pretty watch faces. It's a really cool experience and this has got a big a big design to it. I like the overall size and the weight is light and the look is sharp and the screen is beautiful and the secondary screen if you run out of battery is good and the Spotify download you can download playlists and the maps experience on it all those things are great but what are the cons the cons are somewhat felt if you think about all the subsets of this video you've seen so far where we talk about a section and we talk about pros and cons it was like here are a few pros but oh man the cons in this section it's just like I felt like I kept saying that over and over as I'm filming the cons, oh, they're not good, they're bad cons. <laughs> so what are the issues that I feel like are the big cons? The sync issue was a felt issue on a regular basis. It was frustrating because I love the way the notifications look. They're big and pretty and they have icons. I love the way they look, but they weren't always connected. And for me to download information to the Mobvoi app, it was just like, oh, your watch isn't connected. You need to go through these four steps to get it to connect. Not helpful. The Wear OS woes just overall were just not easy for me. The app was way too simple versus others that are out there right now. So it's just, you know, it, it, it works for the most part other than those Wear OS connectivity issues, but the app is just way too simple. And then the, the, the more important aspects of it, the workout tracking, ultra simple, way too bland. You know, third-party apps, still too simple, still too bland. It's nice to connect to a chest strap with other third-party apps, but the stuff that's built into the watch is just too basic in today's world, and the information it provides is way too basic, and you can't even, you know, zoom into parts. It's just basic and then the sleep and wellness which is a primary feature for what you're you know what you would want if you're into fitness and you're buying a fitness watch but it's also a very crucial piece if you're doing crossfit and you're tracking your the impact of your day and your workouts on your body all of the all of the sleep and wellness features i felt like were not useful all of them and that's sad to say because i really love the first rendition of the tick watch pro 3 so on top of all these, the cost then becomes a barrier that it has all these cool things, but a lot of them don't provide any value and it doesn't really track workouts in a, in a way that provides any detail or value and definitely not CrossFit. So the cost at $300 is just way too high with the competition out there. So when you think of this watch and you think of the competition out there, let's talk about some of the competitors. Garmin Venue 2. Now it's a little bit more expensive. Maybe it's on sale right now, so it's worth. The Garmin Venue 2 is a total package, except it doesn't have training analytics that Garmin provides on multiple watches, and they're fantastic on Garmin systems. But the Venue 2, outside of missing the training aspects of training load, training recovery, and uh, training effect per workout, it has got everything you could want. It's got an accurate SpO2 sensor. The SpO2 sensor will take your, it'll take it all day, it'll take it all night, it'll take it all. The heart rate variability tracking with their body battery is fantastic. It all just works excellent and it's all in one app that stays connected. You get your notifications. It just, it all works and the workout details are in depth and you can look at multiple pieces of information. The health details are in depth and multiple pieces of information. It's just a far superior watch for the price. Even simple watches like the Polar Ignite 2, and I'm just thinking of what others are out there in today's day that have big, pretty screens. Because we just got to think, okay, well, that's what you want this for at some level is a big, pretty screen. The Polar Ignite 2, it's got a simple, it's, it's a little bit too tiny from what I feel comfortable with. And it doesn't have some of the other functions like SpO2 tracking or heart rate variability tracking really other than sleep. Um, but it does provide the bulk of the information you'd want. It connects to Bluetooth, it, it, you know, so chest straps. It gives you great workout data and it gives you training load over time. Crucial information. And then the sleep is a very in-depth wellness review and it gives very useful wellness information. You don't get music, you don't get maps, but you also don't pay a lot of money and it does provide all those things excellently. The Suunto 7, I would say is probably the best Wear OS app watch if you really want it. I love the design. It's probably too big for some, but I love the design. It's got a more rugged look to it. The screen is beautiful. The, the battery life's terrible and the heart rate tracking accuracy is terrible. So those things are terrible, but the wellness aspects are great. You know, some of their analytics are through 
First Beat, which is a very highly rated analytic company with the algorithms they write, the resources like the body battery, all heart rate variability, all those things are super useful and it just it, it's just a much cooler watch in my opinion. It's crazy on sale. And even the Mazefit GTR3 that just came out that I did a review on, you should check out that review because the Mazefit GTR3 was super impressive for accuracy at the optical heart rate sensor because it does not connect to a chest strap no matter what but the workout and training analytics and the health and wellness analytics, all of it was just excellent. Amazfit is on the rise. So that those are the pros and cons. That's the real deal. And I hate saying some of these things because it is just, it is a strong opinion that this was not a great watch experience for me. And there's some of the things that they're trying to do are just not working. So with that, that is the review for the Tick Watch Pro 3 Ultra. It's a Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.